Hey guys, welcome to my analysis of a chess game I played last month in December 2023 against an opponent rated 1926 ELO, as you can see. Um, this is a team format game, so you've got six boards, six players from each team, and the overall score of all six boards decides which team wins. And I was playing board one, being the highest rated player from both teams, so it's a pretty important game for me to win, considering I have the white pieces, and I'm obviously playing their best player, and I'm the highest rated player on my team for this game. So I need to get a result. And the game starts with a Sicilian defense. So it's, it's pretty wild, as you'd expect. I play A3, which is like a delayed wing gambit. You can play B4 straight away and give up this pawn. But if you play a3, you kind of delay the idea and you just give extra support for the b4 square. So my opponent plays g6, which discourages me from going b4 because then the bishop gets on the long diagonal. But a3 is also good because, as you see in a couple moves, it gives my bishop a hidey hole. And I can also bring it to b3 if I want to, because even if he gets chased down with something like a5, a4, I can tuck it away on a2. So my opponent plays knight to c6, and a big part of this opening is me trying to defend the d5 square, and we'll see why that's quite important as the game goes on. So I play d3, just securing my center, getting my bishop open, my opponent plays d6, which the computer prefers e6, and I agree. d6 obviously opens the bishop up, but what's most testing in this line when I play white is when black goes for e6 and really tries to get d5 in quickly. So I go f4, playing it like a Grand Prix sort of attack, uh, if you know that line of the Sicilian. And you're just taking away squares from black, being aggressive. You've got f5 ideas in the future to challenge the g6 pawn. My opponent plays knight f6, I go knight f3, bishop g4, pinning, and setting up knight to d4 to double down on my knight, so that I'm going to have to take with the pawn if he takes. And this is a bit of a theme for the next few moves, because I actually want to do that. Like, I want that to happen, so I castle instead of attacking the bishop. The computer says it's a mistake, but for me... I want my opponent to go knight d4, I want him to take, and I want to take the g-pawn so I can open up the g-file for my rook, meaning that f5 attacking the g6-pawn comes with much greater venom because this bishop's now exposed, and my bishop can get into h6 or something once the diagonal opens up. So we can ignore the computer, really. <laughs> like, we're not, we're not all stockfish. My opponent castles, which... The computer hates, the computer just wants knight d4, but my opponent might have been scared of his weak f7 pawn or something, and clearly I know this opening better than he does. Um, and furthermore, here, the reason why I didn't play h3, because after h3, I was worried about this line, where the knight, knight so move like that, but the knight gets this double attack, and I have to go queen f2, and I'm not really a fan of it. His knight is really strong, and he's got ideas of d5 after he plays e6 soon. So I castle, my opponent castles, I go king h1, which, again, the computer wants h3, but I want to bait my opponent into playing knight to d4, even though it might be objectively worse for me, because I want this trade, and I want to put my rook on the g-file which is why I play king h1, also just to get out of any potential discovered attacks with the queen or any checks with the bishop, right? So he goes knight d4, I go bishop e3, challenging the knight, I want him to take. Um, and my opponent plays knight h5. And here I was really confused, I didn't really understand the point of the move. Is he trying to go here? Is he just trying to support his knight with his bishop? But if that was the case, why didn't he just go knight to d7? h5 looks a bit dubious, especially because this bishop now has no retreat. Although I suppose h3, g4 would trap it anyway, but... A knight on the rim is dim. There's a reason that saying exists. Because 
where's it going? It can return to f6, but it can't come to g3 or f4. So I play queen d2, which the computer isn't really a fan of um, fan of that move. It wants me to take the knight straight away. But I like queen d2 because for me, I just want to keep the tension right now. I, I still want my opponent to take my knight, um, which is why I haven't taken it yet. My opponent plays e6. He, he still doesn't want to take the knight. So I take his knight. So takes, pawn takes, which is quite common in this position because the idea is to open up the C file and target the C pawn, and the C pawn can't advance easily because uh, Black's D pawn, which just arrived there, controls the C3 square. So knight E2, because obviously the knight was under attack. Queen to B6, and now I'm not worried about the open C file because my bishop is on B3. It defends this square. It's on this very nice diagonal, which is closed right now. But remember, my idea is f5, which shreds apart this pawn structure and opens the diagonal for the bishop. Also, I'm still monitoring d5. He still can't play it. And in the previous position here, if he goes d5, I can take, take and drop my bishop back. And he's got isolated d pawns. Uh, like doubled isolated d-pawns, which is just weak, right? So queen b6, bishop b3, and he plays queen c5. And I'm thinking that has the intention of playing d5. Also, bear in mind, this pawn is attacked by two knights. So it is, it is looking kind of weak. I play h3 because he has to take me. So it takes, takes. And now my bishop is unopposed. He has no light squared bishop to challenge it. His dark squared bishop is blocked in behind his pawn. My light squared bishop is about to get liberated once f5 is played. His king's on the other side. If he moves his king, I'm, I'm still controlling some really dangerous squares. So I'm really happy in this position. Even if the computer only says I've got a slight advantage, this is tough to play with black. Because his idea is d5, but he can't play d5 because doubles and isolates the pawns and I have the play with moves like f5 and g4 so my opponent plays a5 looking for a4 which would force my bishop to move somewhere and destabilize the c2 pawn so I just play a4 I know I could play g4 already but why give him anything right I just shut down the play on the queen side completely with this move he goes knight f6. I was actually expecting b5 in the previous position, but my opponent doesn't go for it. He brings his knight back to avoid g4 with tempo. So I push f5. That's the idea. He can't, well, he can take, but I want to open my bishop up. And he takes. And in this position, I can take back, but I decide to play rook a to f1. Because if he takes, then I take the knight, bishop takes, rook takes, and I have two pieces for the rook. And my bishop is incredible. My knight's going to jump in, say, to f5 and d4. Sorry, to f4 and d5. And it's crushing, right? So obviously he can't go for that. So he plays rook a to e8, which x-rays my knight, which is a bit of a weakness because this pawn is a little bit flimsy since it's trying to shut down the file and if my queen moves my knight's going to be undefended if the file opens up so i play g4 here because he can't take either pawn because again two pieces for the rook and i'm simply just threatening to take take and take right so say he plays b6 i'm threatening this and I'm attacking his queen, I'm attacking his knight, I'm getting two pieces for the rook, and it's completely winning, right? So, um, the computer doesn't like g4, actually. The computer prefers me to take, but I personally I don't think it really matters, because the same sort of position is going to occur anyway. So my opponent plays queen e5, which the computer says is a blunder. He's just trying to defend his knight. 
and he's making it so that I can't take the pawn because my knight is hanging, right? The computer wants f takes e4, after which I'd calculated this variation and I thought I was winning because it's like the previous position. Sure, he's got a pawn on um, e3, but my knight is a brilliant blockader controlling the important d4 square whilst blocking the pawn. And I have so much pressure. Like, I would be more than happy to go for this position. So, the computer saying this is a blunder, I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe not for a human. So I take, my opponent plays d5, because it plays on the idea that I can't take the pawn because my knight hangs. And here, I take on g6 first, just open his king side up, this pawn is really weak and I'm trying to soften this diagonal up. And here he takes with the f pawn, which is apparently the best move, but when I was sitting at the board, I was like, whoa, he's really going to allow this pin. <laughs> okay, bro. You, you do you, but I'm not sure about that. And this pawn is hanging. And I spoke to my opponent after the game, and he said he completely forgot that the move d5 cut off his queen's defense of the pawn. So I just grab a pawn, and I'm like, I'm up a pawn. My rooks are incredible. You still can't take because you're pinned. Your bishop is doing nothing. My queen is really active. And I'm going to try and win this d5 pawn and be two pawns up in an endgame. My opponent plays king h8, getting out of the pin, logical. And so I take the pawn. And my opponent can't really take, because once the f-file opens up, I can trade all the rooks. I can then play queen takes d5. And what's important is that this bishop has been taken off of the defense of the d5 pawn, meaning that I simply have a double t double attack on the e5 pawn with my queen and my knight. Also importantly, my king and my knight work to control these squares that the queen wants to go to, to infiltrate my position. And I'm offering a queen trade. My opponent can't accept the queen trade because I'm two pawns up. And if he takes takes, I've got a passed uh, d pawn. And I have a double attack on the d4 pawn, so either he trades the queens, or I win a third pawn. So my opponent can't go for this, and he knows that, so he plays b6, with the intention of queen takes b6, knight takes here, and I can't take because of the pin on my knight. The computer says it's equal, but I know I'm winning. Like, there's no need for that. So I just could queen b5, maintaining the defense of the knight. Sorry, the bishop, even. So he plays knight takes, and again, like in the previous variation, I trade one. I trade the rooks. He only trades one pair of rooks, and then I take here. And the reason this works is because if he'd have taken with the rook, then takes takes here, and we have the same position from before, except b6 is on the board. It's the same position though. Uh, so if he only trades one pair of rooks with bishop takes. Then I have queen takes d5, and here it's slightly different, because if queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, here, and here, I am up two pawns, rook takes, rook takes, I have three passed pawns, this is completely winning, and I'm up two pawns, right? These pawns are going to take forever to trade off this pawn and get going. <laughs> And my king is already there to defend. So this is completely winning for white. So my opponent doesn't take the knight. My opponent plays bishop c5, defending against knight takes here. And in this position, I was actually a little bit worried. Because I was thinking, my knight's under attack, so I have to move the knight. If I move the knight... Then rook here wins my pawn. And now I'm only at one pawn. Is that enough? The computer prefers this line over the line that I played. But I feel like the line that I went for was 
not only a bit trickier since my opponent was really low on time, but also it made it a bit of, a bit cleaner. So in this position, I played b4 because I just want this. And then something like rook d8, c4. My knight is beautiful. Or, well, here I actually just have a fork, but you get my point. I can set up this pawn structure where my opponent can't challenge my pawns and I'm still up two pawns, right? So this is winning. So, and obviously if my opponent moves his bishop, then I just take the pawn. So he has to take, I take, and then he plays rook to e3, attacking h3. So I go rook to f3, because I'd love a trade, obviously. And all my pieces are on light squares, like all my pawns are on light squares. So his bishop can't, he, he, he can't touch them, which is important. So he gives a check, because obviously he doesn't want to trade the rooks. King g2, rook a1, which is attacks my weak a4 pawn. But knight c6, and I'm attacking the bishop. And if the bishop moves to somewhere like c3, I can push. Because currently the bishop's defending that, the pushing square. Because obviously I want to promote, especially since his rook's out the game. Like, this pawn blocks off here, and this pawn blocks off this file. So he's kind of playing without a rook. So he plays bishop d6, rook f6, challenging the bishop. He goes to a3. Because he can't go to b8, he can't go here, he can't go here, and if he goes to c7, then d6 comes with an attack on the bishop. He can't go here, because the knight controls the square, he can't go to f4 because of the rook, he can't go to g2 or, sorry, g3 or h2 because of the king. He can't go to c5 because of d4, he can't go to b4 because the knight controls it. So it's just complete domination. And his only move is bishop a3, which just cuts his rook off. So d6, obviously. Bishop b2 attacking the rook. You've got to be a bit careful. You can't just push and get this position because you're losing now. So you've still got to be a little bit careful. So I just give a check. King g7. And now I play d7. And if he takes the rook, I promote. If he goes bishop f6, I just take the bishop and I promote. So in this position, my opponent resigns and I win the game, which is a great result against a 1926 rated player. And it was it was fairly smooth. It was kind of smooth sailing, to be honest. Um, so I was really happy with this game. And overall, the team won five to one. So we won on five boards and we lost one board. So it was a very comfortable win there, very comfortable win for the team and a very good game from me. And the my rating at this time was 1914 and it gets revised every month. So going into January, it actually got bumped up to 1937 because I got some good results in December and it's helping me on the road to 2000 ELO. So hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you found some of this interesting, entertaining, educational. And if you enjoy this content, please subscribe because I will be posting every single day for at least the next couple of weeks. That's the goal. I want to try to grow this channel because I love chess. And I hope you guys also enjoy chess because I, I love this kind of informative type of video. I think that it for me, these are the types of chess videos that I enjoy the most. And there doesn't seem to be that much of it. There's a lot of online sort of blitz play. Personally, I prefer the more analytical type of chess. But maybe I'm just a massive nerd. Um, anyways, if you've watched to the end, thank you very much. And have a good one.